Welcome back to uh, Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. Uh, you are watching the Skype segment when we give you the chance to talk to us. And with me here is still Omoyele Show, the publisher of Sahara Reporters Show. Uh, welcome back. And um, we are going to talk to our Skype callers. I know we have some people waiting. Uh, we will introduce them and then we'll have the chance to join our conversation with Show. Um, Shadrach in Spain. Shadrach, welcome to Sahara TV. Hello, Shadrach. Okay, I can hear Shadrach. Uh, Emmanuel in Spain. Hello, this is Shadrach. Hello. Emmanuel, are you there? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi. Welcome to Sahara TV. Okay, we have a problem with the um, Skype uh, callers. Um, I will ask you guys to stand by. Our technical people will talk to you. Uh, but before then, let me talk to you, sure. Um, there's this new story about INEC cards and um, what the documents from INEC is showing about the elections in River State and Aquaibom. What, what do we know about that? What's going on? Well, since uh, we, we obtained results of uh, elections from uh, Aquaibom, I mean, INEC card reader downloads from INEC, from I, not from INEC, but, you know, our usual sources. And uh, there are some of the documents that are headed for the tribunal and uh, we started publishing since yesterday. Uh, in the case of Rivers, only 292,000 people that are about voted. But the winner of the election uh, won by 1.29,000 uh, 1, mm. or so. And in the case of Aquaibon, the cadre has uh, captured 434,000 thereabout. Uh, but the winner uh, won by a margin of 900,000. Mm. We've also seen, I've also seen um, uh, the case of uh, Delta, not as egregious, but I think Delta had about 700,000 card readers uh, captured, and the winner won by 700 and something thousand or mm. thereabout. So, uh, so we, we've been releasing them uh, based on uh, as we get them. And we yeah, but, well, but didn't they say at one point that they were allowing people to vote even though the card readers were not? Yes, uh, uh, that's true, but anybody who's voting has to have their, this, this is what they call an incident card, where they write, if, you're, if you don't have a card reader working, they have to fill out an incident card. Mm -hmm. So these numbers that we've come up with or that we received are in addition to, to the, the incident, incident card. So, wow. As you know, uh, when the gubernatorial elections took place, there were not a lot of people that out there. That went out to vote. Yeah. And because of the incidents of violence in rivers, I think it was severely affected mm. by, uh, by those. So uh, to now have, in places like rivers, almost 87 to 90 percent of people come out to vote under those circumstances. Next question. You know, right? And uh, the same thing with uh, Aquaibon State. Mm. Of course, some of the issues being raised uh, on social media, as you normally know, is that nobody is uh, asserting these facts, but they're saying, oh, you know, we are not the only riggers. Go and bring us Kano, mm -hmm. uh, bring us Kaduna. Mm -hmm. uh, and we say, of course, we will bring them when we get them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you look at the number of voters in Kano, registered voters, Kano has almost 5 million registered voters. But the number of voters that came out of voters like mm -hmm. one point. Mm -hmm. million or mm -hmm. there about. Mm -hmm. So those, in my view, are not egregious, but I'm not in any way saying that there are no electoral malpractices. Not but it's just like very obvious. Mm. Uh, now, what, one of the things, I, I saw a lot of videos of people thumb printing uh, cards, um, yeah. the, the, the ballots. Yes. Uh, INEC or whoever is in the tribunal, can they check the, the fingerprints of people? Is that not part of, I don't know how this process is. It's just very expensive. Okay. Uh, process and uh, but I'm sure some candidates will do that. Yeah, they'll bring in uh, uh, thumbprint experts. And what happened in 2011 in places where they did it, uh, not only did they use their thumbs to print on those things, they used palm kernels, you know, to thumbprint. You know, so the fingerprints, wow. of course, cut those uh, pretty easily. So it, it, some of the candidates will have money. The sad part is that. It's now incumbent on the candidates to prove fraud by spending their own money, mm. and they don't have a lot of time. Mm. Uh, of course, the tribunal uh, members will just become billionaires because uh, they they will get a lot of money from from bribery. But mm. uh, maybe with the new the, the fact that the, the central government is not 
especially, you know, especially going to be uh, overlooking some of those things. Some of the judges might sit tight and we might find different results. I hope uh, whatever fraud happened that it could be proven mm. that nobody gets to keep uh, the process of uh, loot. Mm. Okay, let's try the Skype callers again and see if they are ready and if we can talk to them. Uh, Shedrak in Spain. Shedrak, welcome to Sahara TV. Emmanuel in Russia. Emmanuel. Yeah, thank you, Rodolfo. Okay, Emmanuel in Russia. Emmanuel, welcome to Sahara TV. I think we have a delay. Uh, Ezenwa in France. Ezenwa, welcome to Sahara TV. Yeah, welcome to you. Okay. Olushago, Olushago, can I, am I saying that right? Uh, in South Africa, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. Um, so you guys, uh, we have a show right here. I hope you watch the first segment of our conversation. I will want you to, if you have any question for Shore, you can ask him. And I will start with you, Shedrak. Uh, what do you think about the topics we are talking about? We talked about Kashamu and the interview we had with him, Obasanjo Foundation, and now the elections uh, in Okwaibo and River State and the card reader. So go ahead. What is your take? That's for you, Shedrak. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, uh, yeah, yeah. I would like to appreciate uh, Sarah TV, first of all. And I would like to really talk about the card reader thing. I've, I've been going. I always follow Sahara TV, especially the forums where most people talk, because I like to look at what people are saying. Mm. And uh, I just want to make a correction here, because when I try to realize everything, they are trying to put it between PDP and APC. But this is not the problem of PDP or APC. This is the problem of the of the system. People are sabotaging the system. The system supposed to make everybody to play a fair game. But in as much as even our public, our public leaders, the governor of Kwaibo and the state himself, which is directly involved in things like this, I think uh, the, tribunal should, the tribunal itself right now, I think they should be empowered to even go for sanctions against all these governors and all these people that are trying to sabotage the system. Because now the system is getting sabotaged. Okay. And when the system is sabotaged, then the citizens, they don't have any trust, again, uh, for the system. All right. That's all right. just what I want to say in regards to the all right. card reader. Shedra, thank you so much. Uh, and he's saying that it's a system that is wrong and not the, um, and not the individual. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I agree with him. And uh, I hope that not only do the tribunals do their job, that uh, we'll, have a standing, we'll have standing criminal charges or trial happen to people who are directly involved uh, in this massive uh, scale mm. of uh, uh, electoral fraud. That's very important. People need to be taught lessons. Mm. All right. Ezenwa in France. Ezenwa, welcome to Sahara TV. What is your take on these three topics? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I have to thank Sahara TV for their good work um, and the entire Nigerians, the Jesus Christ in the Lacerdation way. In fact, I'm very proud, I'm um, as the leader of Nigerians like this corruption group here in France. Uh, we appreciate. On the incident of the issue in Port Harcourt, uh, Fire Bomb and the Cadrilla, I must confess to you that the index system should have something to do with improvement very, very soon. Because um, I've been following the program all through through the election, there was no election in River State on a quite We saw a lot of incidents, a lot of evidence, but I need to say there's nothing we can do. And I read so many reports from INEC that uh, during the governorship poll, every state, in every state, all should be done with card reader, not in like manner accreditation. So I find a situation where the vote in River State was a complete mess. There was no election. And um, if you look at that of um, Macquarie Bomsen, in all the world, so that takes. But what I'm advising is that the INEC and the tribunal this time should do something. One problem in Nigeria is that the system, the, the electoral laws put some limitations in those things, and I should advise the Nigerian system to make sure that they, there's a lot of um, improvement, especially in the electoral 
Okay. Yeah. Ezen, Ezen, I have to stop you there. Thank you so much. We will come back to you on other topics. Uh, let me go to South Africa and speak to Olushoga. Is that the, how do you pronounce your name, sorry? Oluwashogo. Oh, God. Okay, that's good. Oluwashogo. Uh, go ahead. What is your take on, uh, did you watch the interview with Kashamu or the Obasanjo Foundation story or the INEC uh, issue? Actually, uh, I have been following this uh, for the Sahara online. I read a lot of the news. But one question I want to ask is, who got the contract to supply this card reader? That's the first thing. Number two, was this, I mean, were this card reader tested appropriately before it was dispatched? Yes, I heard that there are lots of pilot studies on it. You know, because why is it that things work in air well in every other country, but when it gets to Nigeria, that's when you have problem. Mm. Okay, that's that's a good point. Um, do we know who got the contracts and why is it that things work in a do. place like Niger, Republic, Benin? You know, all these other There's countries. The guy who got the contract was actually arrested by the SSS uh, towards the end of the election. So it's a, it's a well-known fact. Uh, um, but what I think happened was that perhaps Anek didn't do a good job of training his staff, the ad hoc staff, on how to manage his kids. I remember when we were in Lagos during the first presidential election, something as simple as peeling off uh, the cellophane that ought to be on the fingerprint uh, uh, portion was not done appropriately, and it delayed until Anek people came and. Uh, and in some cases, a deliberate sabotage mm -hmm. of the cadre as the electoral officers were working directly with whichever party paid the highest amount of money to them. And that happened a lot in Imo, where the cadre that was abandoned, that people were just on printing. So what these guys do with election, and I've seen that in our coverage of elections, is that in places like Akwaibon, where the governor is a well-known um, character when it comes to just bulldozing his way through. I mean, uh, talking about uh, Governor Goswila Gos Pabio, uh, or in Rivers, where the wife of the president, Patience Jonathan, said we must win election, and they deployed arms and election rigors. Is that they say, look, you know, just allocate the numbers, and we're going to take care of ourselves at the tribal now. Mm. That's you know. Yeah. Mm. So they do this deliberately. Uh, it's just like thumbing their, you know, their, their nose at the Nigerian people. Mm. And like I mentioned, it would not be in Rivers and in Aquabom that this is happening. We've seen also Delta. And I'm sure if we dig further, you will find that there are discrepancies in places like Lagos and up north. Mm. But the most egregious, because Nigerian people also have followed some of these st cases before the election. Uh, are the ones that we're saying. I, I won't even say the most egregious. For example, somebody doesn't go to court to challenge, you know, even if we find out that the cadre has uh, had less, it, it will make no difference because mm -hmm. there, there are no cases. Don't forget that so many of these things we are getting are coming from tribunals, the lawyers or the candidates who have gone to INEC to request officially and legally for the cadre uh, to be downloaded so that they can use them to prosecute or engage in election petitions. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I know you we want to go, but I, I can't leave you uh, to leave here before you talk about some things that are in the news, too. Um, there is this issue with cable, the cable Nigeria, and mm -hmm. the online media, and the report they filed about Wola Shoenka's speech in, uh, at Harvard. W what, is, what do you know? They have apologized. They said that it's not true. Yeah. Do you know more about that? Do you know? No, I, 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 I think it's uh, part of the problem that comes with uh, reporting online that uh, a lot of people don't understand that it requires a lot more work than just sitting down and writing reports. So what happened is that it's not, cable wasn't the original source of the story. Uh, I think uh, another website known as Hoo Online was the original source of that story. But cable wanting to play smart, went and copied Hoo Online story and claim it to be their own without acknowledging, which helps a lot. If you, are, if, you don't, if you don't acknowledge others, then you're responsible for whatever stories you pick. Wow. So when eventually this thing blew up in their faces, they could not claim that they got it from Hoo Online. 
And what I knew in the back end was that it then got to the point where they were looking for the tape from who online, who promised they had the tape, and who, who couldn't give them the tape because perhaps it doesn't have the tape. I don't know what happened in between. So, but it happens to us frequently where Nigerian newspapers will pick your stories and rewrite them completely and, you know, uh, give, sometimes they will even put in your language. They will, they will plagiarize you. But, you know, they'll say, you know, that, you know, damn it, we, we're here, that we've heard the story. So, of course, on our side, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't care much. We're there for our stories to be used. But when we use other people's stories on our platform, we give them credit. You see on the headline or when you look at the bottom or when you click the story, you know where it's coming. We use stories a lot from Punch, Premium Times, and PM News in Nigeria. And sometimes we use other newspapers. So I think where the problem came from, uh, I would imagine that when you're doing that kind of a story and you have Shoyinka as a subject, you will have strong evidence. I do not have information completely about what Shoyinka said. We have requested, like every other person, including through Shoyinka himself directly, for a full tape to be released. And Shoyinka wrote me back uh, and said, and copied the, uh, someone from um, Harvard saying, please make this thing available to this guys. And we contacted Harvard. Harvard said they would provide the tape, but they haven't done so. But they said they won't provide the transcript. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's where we're at. But I'm just telling you yeah, what, what happened, happened behind yes, the scene. Yeah. My fear is that um, whatever comment Shoenka made was made as part of a question and answer segment. Yes. And from past experiences dealing with Harvard, they will give you the keynote, the speech he yeah, made, but yeah. they won't give you the uh, question and answer section because they need to get permission from the people in the audience yes. to be able to give you their picture or their image. So yeah. that may not happen. But that's very interesting because yeah. um, a lot of people have been commenting on because that. If, but if, if I was there uh, and I'm going to write something that Shrinka said, I'll, I'll get my... Yeah, yeah, you my, should. My, yeah, yeah. You if the evidence was there and then it makes... Uh, it is, I don't, like you said, and uh, I don't imagine that Harvard would release... Uh, the question and the Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they will probably give us the keynotes. You know, they the will, keynotes they'll give you that. Yeah, yeah that's, so. that's easy. Yeah. Now, the other thing is uh, uh, PDP. People are saying that it's imploding. What is going on within the PDP? For the first part of this week, we had uh, uh, people in the PDP, the executive and the presidency, fighting over, over um, what happened to the money. What, what happened? You know, <laughs> the PDP is... Uh, it's like a party of a very interesting character. It's a combination of all kinds of people. You can't call it a party. It's a marketplace of where people just haggle, hustle, and sell stuff and make money. Uh, it's, 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 it's just sort of what it is. And the moment the main commodity uh, that, is, that binds that market together, it's just like you go to a marketplace, you go for money to evening. When everybody is either tired or exhausted and there's no more money to spend, the market ends, right? Uh, or it gets dark. You know, so otherwise, there have been to places in Nigeria where the market goes on until, you know, like they just keep going if mm -hmm. there's more goods and services. Mm -hmm. But PDP's commodity is money. Uh, this time around, it looks like either President Jonathan put it in the wrong hands and those guys did not release it. And uh, the market ended pretty early in the game, and that's why he lost. And what you're saying is just people saying, look, you know, you are responsible for it. You stole this. You know, we published vouchers of uh, PDP leaders who went and took care of themselves when they saw that the party was falling apart. Uh, and when the, those vouchers apparently came from Jonathan's people, President Jonathan's uh, men, and the PD, that got uh, the PDP leadership uh, upset, and they came out and said, look, you know, you're responsible for your loss in the election. You had a wife that was uncontrollable. You, you had, uh, you know, a crazy man who was your spokesperson referring to Fanny Kayode. So the blames to go around. Uh, but I think, you know, some people will remain in PDP because, you see, this is, a, this is actually a good time to be in the opposition uh, because there's just so much expectations. And, People, but I don't think Buhari will be able to meet the expectations so fast for the opposition to come in and start capitalizing on it. Mm. And whoever is able to have some kind of credibility uh, will start getting patronage again. Mm. You know, and the patronage might actually come from the APC guys. Mm. So some of the guys who are grandstanding today in PDP 
um, looking to position themselves to be attracted to the APC. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know we are, you have to go, and I know also that Sahara Reporters and uh, Sahara TV will cover the inauguration. Can you talk a little bit about that? We, we haven't finished the planning yet, but we, we're hoping to be able to bring the inauguration to our viewers live mm -hmm. uh, and try to do some other things that, you know, we increase transparency and talk more about the political players within the new government uh, to see. Uh, but we don't have anything set uh, yet, nothing cast in stone uh, as to what to expect. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the same way we kind of play down the expectation during the election, we say, look, we'll try to bring, out, bring you our best. And uh, it turned out that uh, it wasn't bad at all. Mm -hmm. And I must always use this opportunity when I come on the shows to thank just regular people who are there supporting us every time, providing information and uh, posting stories. You know, our distribution network is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I respect and uh, continue to hope that uh, you guys uh, just draw more people. I, I, I remember saying something in 2011 that by the next election, we want to have more likes on Facebook than President Jonathan. Mm. Uh, I don't think we reached that, but with maybe 200,000 uh, people shy, shy of that. Of that. Yeah. So. All right. Um, um, you have to go, otherwise I will uh, ask the callers to ask you a question. Well, you maybe one more question. One more question. Please, okay. Sir. Akin, I understand you just joined us. Welcome to Sahara TV. Yeah, thank you very much, Budo. Okay, so I have Shore here. If you have any question for him, you can ask him or you have a comment on what we've been talking about, we will take it from you. Go ahead. Um, yes, um, uh, I'm not, what I want to say is that the, the problem in PDP, I'm not surprised like what he said, that it's like a, 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 it's like a match. But what uh, baffles me is um, the reaction of the people when they uh, get reply from Fire chief, for example, you know, is um, um, for me is a big disappointment to the AKT people. And when they get reaction from Meitu himself, and um, the the thing goes back and forth like like a basketball, I, I feel it's um, it's a shame to Nigeria. I'll, I'll say this because uh, by now we should be talking about. How do we pick up the pieces of this country? How what can be done, and um, what can um, Buhari do to salvage the situation? And look, and they now should be waiting for Buhari to start up, for APC to kickstart their own uh, side of a new Nigeria, and now they can key in in criticizing, in bringing you know better options that what Buhari is doing. And I think that should be better. Then secondly. They should not be, you know, um, taking their dirty laundry out and cleaning it in the public. It should be a private thing that they should be able to just settle within themselves and start to build a bulwark to be a committee. Okay, okay, thank you. Opposition for the new um, government. Yeah, thank you, Akin. I have to say that we want them to. Uh, wash their laundry outside. Uh, we want no, to see. We love that. We love that. We, love we want that, to yeah. see. Yeah. We want to hear about and, that. And you know, just forget it happens every part. You remember there was uh, even APC when Tommy came in was leaving to go mm -hmm. to PDP. I mean, he taught Inubu apart. You know, uh, saying he said all kinds of things. And 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 it's very important to also mention this. Is this a global phenomenon? Mm -hmm. you know, politicians everywhere are almost the same, mm -hmm. except that Nigerian politicians make more money than mm -hmm. politicians elsewhere. Uh, but even in the U.S., you have some of the egregious characters. <laughs> you know, they say things that you can't believe uh, anybody with uh, any modicum of decency would say. Mm. But that's what it is for you. You know, people will say whatever they do because people are pandering to their own different constituencies. Mm. Uh, the PDP chairman was accused of sending out, and he accuses uh, a fire share of saying, well, provide the evidence that I sold that, but I hope it's not the kind of evidence you had about Buhari's health. You know, these are the, that shows to you what was going on internally in those times that we thought uh, they were all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have to take a break. Uh, we want to thank you, Shore, for joining us. Uh, when we come back, we are going to talk about the election in Britain, where uh, David Cameron won re-election, and a lot of Nigerians also won election, and uh, all the other topics we've been touching now. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.